Missing Nemama is a new children's book about a young indigenous girl named Katiri whose uh, mother has gone missing. Now, the book follows Katiri through major life milestones, alternating between her voice and that of her missing mom who uh, observes from beyond. Joining us is the author of Missing Nima, Melanie Florence. And Melanie, first of all, congratulations. Uh, Last week, you took home the TD Canadian Children's Literature Award for your new children's book focused on missing and murdered in Indigenous women from a young child's perspective. What did winning that award mean to you? It's pretty surreal. You know, it's, we spend a lot of time kind of sitting on our couches or offices in our PJs making stuff up. So to have it actually be recognized and, and realize that people are actually reading what you're writing, it's, it's pretty exciting. Melanie, what motivated you to become an author? I always wrote. Um, since I was a kid, I have always been a huge reader and just, I think I just wanted to be in that world somehow, you know, so I think I just always had this passion for creating uh, stories and, and reading them. And so it's something that I just always wanted to do. Now your picture book, Nima, you know, it's gotten a lot of uh, positive feedback, even from Carolyn Bennett. Um, tell us yeah. about your picture book and the brainstorming that went into uh, this book. It was something that was really off the cuff. I had been reading quite a bit or trying to read quite a bit about um, the missing murdered Indigenous women. And this was about a year ago, I guess. Uh, more than that, a year and a half ago. And some of my friends on social media were going through this on a personal level where they had family members who had been killed or were missing, and they really weren't finding any justice. They were finding that nobody was interested. And it was something that really touched me. It bothered me. And in trying to do some research into it and find out more about it just for myself, I was finding that it wasn't covered as much as I thought it should. I was in my editor's office and leafing through a book of hers that was also a dark picture book. And I said, somebody should write a book about missing and murdered Indigenous women. Hmm. And it just sort of snowballed from there. So it wasn't that I sat down and gave it this thought of, you know, what story can I write? How can I do this? It really just kind of popped into my head that I need to write this, you know? When it came to the missing and murdered Indigenous women part of it and, and actually sitting down and writing the book, what was the most challenging part of, of uh, you know, writing this book? Uh, the mother part came really easily. I just kind of sat down and wrote it. And sadly, it doesn't always work that way when I want to write, but it really just wrote itself, that part of it. But when I had to write the words of the daughter, I found that much more difficult. And I think because I'm a mom of a young girl myself, I think that that's why the mother part came easier to me because I was writing it as if I was writing it to her. And when I had to sort of put myself in her position and write the story back towards the mother, I found that much more emotionally draining. Cree author Melanie Florence on the show this afternoon. Melanie, you've obviously read the book to your kids. So, I mean, what was their reaction to it? I have an 11-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old, uh, almost 13-year-old son, and they weren't as overwhelmed by the story as I think a lot of people seem to be, where they take it really uh, emotionally, but my kids sort of saw me writing it the whole process. So when they finally sat down and read it, they really kind of knew what the story was. So it wasn't um, the big emotional response that some people have, but it did kind of affect my daughter more than I thought uh, because I recently was sent to Winnipeg by CBC to talk to some kids, and I told my daughter I was going to Winnipeg. And her response was to look at me sort of fearfully and say, but women go missing in Winnipeg. Mm. You know, so she sort of, I didn't realize that she had sort of equated that, you know, like taken this message from the book and realized that as a part Indigenous woman traveling to Winnipeg that I would be at risk. So it, it really, you know, that was a hard realization that, okay, yeah, you are getting the point of this book, but it also, you know, it, it's hard to see your daughter thinking that way. Author uh, Melanie Florence on the show this afternoon. Melanie, when you develop characters uh, such as the young girl in this book, do you already know, who, uh, you know, who they are before you begin writing or do you let them develop as you go? 
A little bit of both, actually. I usually do an outline. I didn't used to, but it certainly helps. Um, so I do have an idea of who the character is, but I do find that they kind of take on a life of their own when I'm writing, and it sort of takes them in different directions than I initially anticipate sometimes. So um, usually I have an idea of who the character is, but often it does tend to change throughout the story. That is a Cree author Melanie Florence on the show. Her book, Missing Nemama, pretty much focusing on missing and murdered Indigenous women from a young child's perspective, is now at bookstores right across Canada.